in 2019 I was given a set of these. These are the wild peak, falcon wild peak mud terrain tyres for my green troop carrier. And at the time I gave a, a, a brief, it wasn't a review because I'd just done one trip in it. But it was my impressions okay, well, and it was very brief. Now though, I fitted them to four vehicles. I've got, well, it's now 2022, a considerable amount of mileage and time using the Falcon tires. And this is my report. Established in 1996, Forex Overland is the world's first global overland expedition channel. Join us as we explore the world by four wheel drive. My green troop carrier, I did one or two expeditions mostly short ones with the the same as I've got here, the mud terrains. I did the Konitsu Highway and the parts of the Nullarbor and some other beach trips. I then built the Dream Tourer where I had the, the Falcon all-terrain tires on, the, on that vehicle did uh, one trip to the Pilbara and several uh, shorter beach trips and bush trips and from 2021 this vehicle and of course the Range Rover wearing the mud terrain. We'll push on. But then to relieve the boredom the track started getting really interesting. To most motorists I think tyres are a bit of a grudge purchase. Uh, motor enthusiasts, obviously less so, and us four drivers, definitely not a grudge purchase. It's something that we actually look forward to do, and we look forward to talking about tyres and arguing about them around the campfire. But at the end of the day, the performance of our tyres on trips is critical. If I am ever asked the question, what is the first thing you do to set up a vehicle to go overland, I will say, you, you get a set of decent tyres. It's the first thing, after you've packed your heart medicine, you get a set of decent tyres because when they fail, it's often catastrophic. It can be a blowout could cause a vehicle to, to have an accident. It's the safety concerns. The, it can bring an expedition to a standstill. You can have four vehicles in a convoy and if one of the vehicles is suffering from constant tyre failure, constant punctures, it can bring the entire convoy to a standstill. And... So it's a, it's a really important part of building uh, an effective and reliable overlander. Falcon boasts about being a very strong tyre and definitely suitable for the adventurous off-roader. My conclusion in a nutshell, I am, I am so keeping these tyres. Yes, they were, they were, I'm not sponsored by Falcon. Actually, I wish now that I, I, I now want a sponsorship from them because I, I'm happy to take sponsorships or, or from, from organizations where I have proven the product. And so when I say I can almost endorse it, it's purely because I've used them and they've proven their metal. On the Canning Stock route was the final, to me, the final test. This is the worst time of day for driving. Especially we had four vehicles and eventually five vehicles on that convoy. The only vehicles not to have any tyre issues of any kind were the two riding up front. And that was this vehicle and the vehicle behind me, which was the Range Rover, which was also carrying the two they were carrying two 2585 16 mud terrains. These are two 6575 mud terrains. I won't mention the makes of the other tires of the other three vehicles, but they all had tire issues. I haven't had to think about my tires since 2019. So to me, strength, toughness, reliability of a, of a tire is such an important part of an off-road vehicle and it is why I am not carrying a second spare wheel on this vehicle and I have no intention of fitting a second spare wheel spare on this vehicle I just don't need it 
the Africa vehicle that I'm going to be building 2023 I'm going to I'm going to do my very best to get a set of Falcon mud terrains and only carry one spare. I'd rather use the weight for something else. After we got back from Canning Stock Route and before filming this, I inspected all of my tires very, very closely and not a chip, not a single chip of any kind. And southern section, last two or so days of the Canning, tough on tires, hard rock surface. Um, that's a good, that's a good sign. Mileage is difficult for me to tell you because I haven't had any set long enough to be able to judge a distance covered. Reports are good and that's as much as I can say about it. I'm getting good reports, I'm hearing good things. In terms of driving, grip, the only place, and I think this is common to most mud tyres, where you have to pay a bit more attention is on asphalt in the wet. They don't, they, they don't grip particularly well and they don't brake particularly well. There are two things about mud tires that one has to think about, you know, this is the cost of a mud tire. Firstly, wet weather performance on asphalt particularly, uh, braking distances are lengthened and grip is reduced when compared to say an all-terrain tire on the same vehicle. So you pay attention when driving in those environments. The second thing is noise. Are the mud terrains noisy? I can hear them. Are they noisy? Well, when compared to other mud terrains, I did spend some time with the BF Goodrich KM3 tire. I think these are quieter. But then those were slightly wider tyre, so I'm not comparing to, let's put it this way, if they're, they're certainly not noisier, they might be very similar. M my impression is these are, in terms of noise, similar to most mud terrain tyres. Not especially noisy, not especially quiet. Grip on wet asphalt, again, pretty typical of mud terrain tyres. What more do you want me to say? Fantastic. Brilliant. Keeping them. What more do you want to know? What tyre pressures do I run them at? Typical tyre pressures of a three-ply side wall tyre. I'm not going to be more specific than that because terrains change and we adapt the tyre pressures to the terrain. 